Welcome back to another episode with DNA. So this week we have got a few little caravan in improvements, I guess you could say. Improvements or hacks or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. But we've yeah. So, so we're doing a water saver one. We also will show you where we put the inverter, and we've mounted the Starlink to the caravan. So we'll show you what we've done and how we got to those points. Stay tuned, keep watching. So we got three for you to see. Three. Yes, that's three fingers, love, yes. <laughs> you can be a good <laughs> All right. Well, obviously by Indy being under the van, Dave's working on it, so let's check out what he's up to. What are you up to? Oh, uh, like in our last van, we had this, we had a bigger toolbox, and we had the Starlink screwed there permanently, but it was very low, like, so we did have the drama that you did really need to point south or east west so that you could get the satellite going that way, that way or from the front. But this has got this big box and it's quite tall. So I'm thinking if I mount this like that and then I put these brackets on, which I don't think is going to work now that I've brought the bloody things, but mount it like that but yeah it means I'm gonna have to drill a hole through this nice new sign at the front no we're not doing that no so what I might do I did have another thought you can get um, some black aluminum because this is aluminium and get some black aluminium tubing and I can screw two lengths coming out so that it actually sits on it and that way I can still use it as a wood box there's plenty of room I'm not actually going to plumb it in yet, I'm just going to mount it. Uh, I'll work out once we go and get the inverter what we can do. But more than likely I'm going to have to drill a hole somewhere here, probably on this flat bit, and then run the cable out. But I'll leave the excess cable here so that if we do need to um, pull it or take it off, we can shift it. But uh, look, we've done, where we go? Cape York. So we've done yeah. all of Cape York with that um, thing held on here with just tech screws yeah didn't, didn't vibrate off so if I although we did have a lady come running after us and saying oh my god you've left the Starlink on the bloody caravan well we left it on drive <laughs> off but it's permanently mounted <laughs> and I think by the time I put this on it'll be there and it's more than enough by the time it angles it's about that angle it's going to miss everything so it doesn't matter where we park as long as we don't park under trees so I'll take these back to Bunnings and I'll get the pipe and then we'll go from there. And I'll put that there, it'll probably fall off. Put that there and we'll head off to Bunnings now. Back from Bunnings? Back from Bunnings. I've, um, I won't let Nick get down because he's on a stool, but it she'll spin around. <laughs> I've brought some screws, some ends. So what I'm going to do is cut this in half. So it'll stick out a little bit, but I can screw it down there and there and there. Cut it exactly half. Thing will sit on top of that. It's all aluminium, so it weighs, I think this weighs like Nothing. 100 grams. So, and then, because I can never cut straight, got little black knobs to put in there, so it looks all good. And then that still allows you to Use yeah, the, well, I'll still be able to use the wood because it's only taken. Wood box. Just push it in. So yeah, we'll see how I go. I'll cut this up and we'll start going. Built-in workbench. It's <laughs> been told to turn it the other way. It's scratch. You're still going to. So I'll just screw down into there, into the, this into that, and then I can screw these bits into there, just with tech screws like last time. So that'd be what, a little bit of overhang? Well it is because um, you've got to have it far enough back so when the dish, the dish flattens out it doesn't hit the, the caravan. 
So I'll screw them in and I'll probably bring this forward to about there. Always in the workspace, Indy. Hmm? Right, I've just done a little pilot hole so through to here because I don't want to squash it and have it right up. I'm just using these. Self drilling one. Hex head. Hex head. sit on there put some more tech screws down there and there and we're done cheers thirsty work is it love that it is right i'm going to take them off i'm just going to put a little dob of silicon black silicon underneath it just so that it Gives it a bit of a spongy sort of feel. It's less likely for it. Oh, it's Ooh, a boy. Oh, it's a boy. What's going on there? You shook it up, didn't you? <laughs> no. <laughs> you liar. No, no, you didn't. I'll put a bit in the hole. Just enough around there to. I don't want to lose an ear everywhere, but. Just in case, you know, it does rattle loose a little bit. Oh. What's, what's happened? Not only did you shake me beer, you put the silicon all over me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I um, lent on it to, to get down and put my hand in it. I don't want to over tighten it. So these little cuphead screws, self-tapping ones, one in each corner. When we done um, Cape York, that's all that we had to hold that thing on and we went right around Australia like it. So I'm gonna trust them again. Lucky last. Last one. The beauty of this is if you have to and you're under trees, we can still just undo these four screws and use the Starlink, not normal, put it out, out in the open, but that. That's the front. Like I said, we're just, just putting it here for now, I'll plug it in, we'll see if it'll go, but I don't think we'll pick anything up in here, but. The other thing was, we put, last time when we drove, we had the, the Starlink off to this side and it copped all the, the stones and stuff coming up. So at least this way, it's in the middle, it's still protected by the car and it should be a lot better for it there. We'll plug it in and see what happens. Just 
just making sure there's plenty of room for it to spin. Um, Nick wanted the better side out the front, but it's making the cord out the front, so I will, once it's set up, I'll take, unscrew this, turn that around so the actual cord runs down the back. I can run it down the leg and then down the back of there, and then we work out where we're going to put it in, how we get it inside from there. <laughs> it's going to struggle because we're under the shed, but Dave's off to off-road living to sort out our power scenario. Nice and early, waking up the neighbours. Coffee tomorrow morning in the van with the new inverter. Yeah, see hopefully. Ya. All right, see ya. Bye. Right, it is what's the time? Quarter to six, and we're off to well, I'm off to uh, off road living or spark to get the inverter installed in the caravan. All right, well. Oh, what, buddy? I've been out. I've been out all day, and she's been eating donuts. I have not. I've got my donuts ready to uh, put the coffee machine in the Evolve to have coffee off grid with the inverter installed. Yeah. Hurry up! Well, open the gate so I can put it away. All right. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Welcome back to DNA from WA. Dave hates that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Dave went off yesterday to off-road living to get our inverter installed and we've popped the coffee machine in and Dave's going to make me a coffee this morning and see how it goes. So I'll pass you over to Dave and he can explain how the guys went yesterday and what the costs were. Alright. Well nothing fancy, it's just an inverter just in here. So two, two and a half thousand watt, 12 volt one. Um, obviously it's got an isolator switch, circuit breaker. Um, we're just gonna see, there's your circuit breaker, the isolator switch. We're just gonna see how we go with the 300. 400 would have been a lot better, but it's a lot of money just to, to match up to that, I've got to buy another 300 which makes 600 but might be a bit overkill. We did try the aircon last night, it does run it. It's not gonna run it forever, <laughs> probably a couple of hours, but we're not really trying to travel that way now, so. Not yet anyway. Nah, uh, well, see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> never um, say never. Now there is no power point on this side. Yeah. Because of, because of the gas, apparently yeah. I did ask. Yeah. And they can't put it in because of, it's a spark thing too close to the gas. That can be, I said, well, there's one under here. He said, but it's not near like a naked flame, so, or gas coming out. So all I've done. So for our one coffee a day. Is I've just unplugged the BM Pro, which is, it still all works. It just, that bat, that plugged in there is just to charge the, um, the battery charger part of it. And when you're on inverter, you don't charge because it uses more power than you put back in. Yeah, so. we're only making two coffees, so. So turn that on. Unless you see us and hit us up for a cuppa. <laughs> and and um, yeah. The inverter, the switch for the inverter, I've got them to put it up here. So simple. Um, so you come in, we need it. That way, if there's any lights shining, it's not bothering Nick. So that's it, come on. 
we'll just turn this on. Cross your fingers, insurance. <laughs> there we go. Beautiful. I do it in two lots because um, otherwise it overflows everywhere. And we actually got that hot tip from someone on a viewer. Viewer said do that. So thanks so, for that. A little bit there. I like it a bit stronger. Like you women. <laughs> oh, good God, you're soft. You're like a marshmallow. <laughs> Sookie over anyway. <laughs> oh, I forgot me donuts. Hang on. No, you don't need donuts at eight o'clock in the morning. I so do. No, you don't. Nothing like a freshly brewed coffee. Coffee machine worked on the uh, inverter. Yep. Got me donut. <laughs> A bloody donut. Bloody donut. So, um, yeah, so how did you find the service and everything um, with off road living up there? Yep, very good. Um, always accommodating. Just sort of, I just sort of messaged them and said, look, when can you? And it has to be on a certain day because it's the day I get off. And had me in within two weeks, so that was good. Um, cost, I think the inverter is around that, somewhere between seven and eight hundred dollars, and the total install was just over three grand, but that included, most of it obviously is uh, electrical bill, so obviously they've plumbed all the inverter into the every power point in the caravan so plus added extra rcds and a changeover switch outside where all the rcds are so apart from that yeah it's pretty good so obviously we'll just go now and try and see what happens see if, see if that's enough power <laughs> all right with dna how are we dave's just got home from work and we're gonna do an install of oh we've got a little um hot water saver valve so got it online obviously we're in mandra ordered it it got sent on monday it got here wednesday and from, from brisbane so you did do the run around and you did oh, try no, no one sells them here like you did reese you did all all the plumbing shops and nobody actually had any so you yeah. did have to yeah. order it how so much was it delivered here 218 or something like that yeah it's about 12 bucks no 210 so for those who don't know what this is about just do a little explain all right so this so when we, explain so when we turn the water on nick gets confused and worrying about hot water <laughs> oh so she'll know which one's are hot because once this is in you turn it to hot and if you turn the tap on it, nothing will come out until it reaches temperature so on here there is um like a flow so the water will come from the hot water system this side and flow out that side but it only flows out this side once it hits temperature so what will happen is it'll come in here and it'll bypass and go back to the tank until it reaches temperature once it reaches temperature a little valve opens up here and the water will come out so we're going to do a little test to see oh the only other thing i have to do is buy a couple of these things just so you can push your they'll screw onto each end and just so that they all use this hose, so you can just push the hose in and it doesn't come out. Push it back in to get it out. So we'll do a little test. We'll see how much water we use with the hot water. So I've just turned the gas on, turned the hot water system on. Hottest to the left, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Not the sharpest tool in the so shed. So we've got a little container here and we'll measure this and then we'll measure the one in the shower. shower. Yeah. Just so we can get a rough idea. Oh, if we turn the pump on. 
Let's see. No. <laughs> been caravanning long? Oh, will be in a bit. <laughs> oh, pumps. Okay. Take two. Take two. So. Did we wait long enough? Maybe not. Right, it's getting warm. Right, it's hot. Wow, so, you know, that's that's more than you'd need to even do your dishes with. So let's, let's just see if we can spill it. I'll do it this way. You would have poured it into this and spilled I would. it everywhere. <laughs> I'll get one out first. So that's 800 mils. Thirteen hundred mils. Now I can pour it. Two point three liters. So what? Two and a half liters in, roughly. Yep, two and a half liters. Wasted. Most of that goes down the drain while you're waiting to be hot. So what will happen with this valve is that will just push that back. So you're not wasting. So you're not wasting. Okay. All right, we'll measure the shower, the shower now. Squeeze in. Okay, mind you, the hot water is already to that. Has come through Come through that. there. So it probably won't use as much to here. But we'll turn on and see. Right, it's hot now. Okay, let's measure that and see how now, we go. That's not as much. Oh, mate, you want to pee? Virtue say a litre. So if you were just having a shower and we never run it in the kitchen, um, you basically would have wasted three litres waiting for it to get hot. I reckon about three litres if you were just turning the shower, shower on, on for the first time. Yep. But it stops all of that. Yeah. Okay. So cool. we'll fit this up. It's pretty simple. I've just got to cut the line, the hot water where it comes from the hot water system underneath. Just cut a piece out, put that in, and then run this to the um, the water <laughs> tank. <laughs> the, We'll run it to the water back into the water tank in the drain pipe so we'll just so it's always on so it'll just nothing comes back that way it's a one-way valve um but it'll only open up when the tap's under pressure and it just pushes it back into the thing all right radio so we'll install that and then we'll go from there okay so just getting back to this i have put the the thread tape on each one of them so there, oh, and tuck there and there. So everywhere there's a join, I've thread taped it. Uh, we're going to go underneath the van and I'll show you where I'm going to put it. Sorry about this, it's a bit hard. Nick, so getting the hair done, so. So this white um, one is the hot water, so the hot water system's there. Then it, then it flows along here and then up between the axles it goes into the kitchen, which is the first spot. So this is the outlet on the um, tank that I want it to flow back into. So I'm going to put this up here, like that one. I'll cut it and put that in there and then I'll support it and then I can run from this point to that point with a hose to flow it back in. So I'll cut this and I'll turn around. I'll cut it and we'll put it in. I'm back with you. Okay, I've um, cut this, but when you cut these pipes, you're gonna need a proper pipe cutter or a sharp razor blade so you get a nice square finish to it. So I've 
cut that up there. I'll fit that piece in now. Right, I've just got that in. I had to undo these clamps so I could fit this hose. I mean, it was simple as I just cut that piece out. There it is there. Push it on. Um, up here, so I'll cable tie that up there so it doesn't move. I'll put a little piece in there and then I'll just get a bit of garden hose. Sorry, a bit of garden hose from here that'll come around. And then up into there. Sorry, up into there. Righto. So, if you look up here, you just put a little click in piece as an elbow. The bit of... Jesus, it's a bit tight under here. This piece of pipe that I cut out of here, I'll put in the end of that, so that goes right back into there. Force the garden hose on it, put a clamp on it. Runs back down there and into that. So if I turn this on now, there you go. So the water will come out of the hot water system along there into here and then out through here and back into the tank until it reaches temperature. When it reaches temperature, this valve opens up, this one shuts, and then we get the hot water along there. So cross your fingers, I'll put it in the right way. I'll go and turn it on now and see what's happening. Sorry about the noise, but the neighbors get in their lawn mode. Okay, I'm back in the van. Um, we've got the bowl under here. And then I'm gonna turn on this tap and we'll see what happens. Um, you're supposed to, it's supposed to not let any water through until it's warm. So pump's going, it's just dripping, just dripping. So while this is waiting for the water to come through, there you go, and it's hot straight away. How cool is that? So virtually we you're not wasting hardly any water at all. And okay, so we'll try the share now. So what I've done to give it a true reading, that you turn the hot water system off, turn the tap on again so that it runs cold water through. Um, so now it's all stopped. Um, turn the hot water system back on because we're on instantaneous I can do that um, and now I turn the shower on and we'll see how long it takes for the hot water to come out of there the pump's going it's a couple little drops There you go, the water's warm straight away. That's brilliant. So that's going to save us heaps of water. I was thinking about putting another water tank underneath, but doing this, we're saving about three litres every time we turn on the hot water tap. So, you know, it wasn't worth putting that on, and that's a lot easier, less weight, and works beautiful.